video I show you how I put the kitchen together using scrap materials. Keep in mind, I am not a carpenter, so this is probably not how you actually build a cabinet. I'm piecing the kitchen together with leftover lumber. There's going to be a little cubby created back in here in the bed area, hence the reading light. Set of drawers here and some extra storage. Uh, water supply, gray water there with the sink, and then the extra set of drawers, which can come out and give me access to the bathroom. This will need a face front, and then the top. Still trying to keep things as lightweight as possible. And then I got to think about the upper cabinets. My Frankenstein kitchen is coming together. The whole thing was supposed to be as lightweight as possible. That's going to get a set of double doors. That's going to get a set of double doors. That is my gray water. That will be my wash water. I will have water in bottles to drink and to cook with. The back corner was a little tricky. So it was the back corner up there. I made my upper cabinets as lightweight and as sturdy as possible. I'm going to have a door there and a set of double doors there. That still needs the face frame. Mind you, I'm not a carpenter and I do not know how to make cabinets, so I'm just kind of piecing them together as I go. So this is what it looks like. This is my sink setup. I'm going to have my water here for washing dishes and whatnot. And my gray water is down there. I went to a couple different stores and I priced these kind of two and a half gallon containers out because I didn't want anything bigger and they wanted like 20 bucks for them and I looked at the laundry detergent said it's the exact same container and it was only 10 11 dollars a piece so score on that one plus I got two containers full of laundry detergent to use I could not decide what I wanted to do with my kitchen countertop I even toyed with plywood but I knew that would be heavy, but toyed with plywood and painting a faux granite on it. And then I came across these really pretty grained one by tens and realized that a one by 10 was not gonna be wide enough. So I glued a little spacer when I clamped these together and glued them. And I'm really happy with the way it looks. Hopefully I can cut it just right to get it in for my kitchen countertop. And I'm really happy with it. The kitchen is getting prettier and it's getting closer to being done. This is what my countertop looks like. It's a very soft wood, so I'll probably be having a heart attack about that. But I think it's very pretty. What I didn't think about was this back corner here. I have to be able to come in and put screws in for the hinges. So I had to bring that out a little bit further. Thought about it down there. Did not think about it up there. Just some plywood ends. But I think it looks pretty nice. I really dreaded making the kitchen cabinet doors. Then I watched a YouTube video of some guy that made cabinet doors with a table saw, a miter saw, and some chisels. And he's doing it this way and I'm pretty happy with the results at least they look kind of square the doors are done and they're stained I put the provincial oak on this and the weathered oak on that it's gonna looks like it would be odd putting them together with the light trim and the dark interior inset but I think it will look nice and if I have enough different colors going, then you won't notice. Made some more doors to go on my little cabinet that's going to hold my refrigerator. I had to notch out the side there so that it could get ventilation while it's running. And I stained it to match everything else in the kitchen. The DC electrical outlets are pretty deep and my walls are not that deep so I, excuse my dirty hands I got paint on them so I made these little boxes and I'm just gonna sand them down 
so that they can sit in there and then you can set a cell phone on top if you're charging your cell phone. So it's a little unorthodox, but it works and the wood is super pretty. This is the current state of affairs. kitchen cabinet doors on. That piece needs to be finished. It's um, one of those faux things. So I need the whole thing to open up to gain access to the battery. So that needs some work. My countertops. My kitchen sink. This is a little battery operated pump. It charges on a USB which is perfect because I got my power supply hooked in. There's the kitchen cabinet uppers and this is my refrigerator center. So these open up into storage. So this is the bottom one. And here's my fridge. I had to make sure it was strong enough not screwed in yet but I had to make sure it was strong enough but light enough to hold this heavy fridge and that's gonna hook into DC which will come over here and plug into my little power supply here so some things yet to do trim around the door backsplash trim around the windows and then trim here I also need to work on the cushions. In my effort to keep things lightweight and low cost, I'm going to try and make my own dry stack stone backsplash. These were 99 cents a piece at Menards, so I'm hoping to do the whole backsplash for about $14. So let's see how this works. I cut them into strips and then some random pieces and then I'm going to line them along the back. Hopefully they'll stick and hopefully it'll look like real stones. Look at this. I love it when a plan comes together. It looks like dry stack stone. It's not super duper perfect, but I'm going to cut back here with some grout and just fill that in but I'm like super happy with it. This kind of stuff at Menards was almost $18 a square foot. I'm getting it done for 99 cents a square foot.